Okay, um, so this is, um, this is rock salt that we make and produce our own salt brine that we apply to the roadways. We, we take the salt and we, and we put it inside this salt brine maker and we, and we circulate it up through the salt and you can kind of see the salt right here. This is, this is the same rock salt that we've seen earlier. And uh, this, uh, this water will actually come up and mix with the salt and then it will, uh, it will go through these downspouts right here. You can see. Yeah, so, uh, so that water will mix with the salt until we can obtain a, uh, a concentration of 23%. And the way we do that, we use this hydrometer and we'll just drop it in, the mi in this mixture, in this solution, and it will actually float. And it has a graduated scale on it that will let us know when we have achieved 23%. I believe it's right there without my glasses on. <laughs> We will take this thing, hold 600 gallons, and we will evacuate the salt brine at 23% concentration out to the, the holding tank. When we're putting that salt brine down on the road, uh, we're, we're trying to prevent the bond happening between the compact snow and ice and the roadway. By getting that salt brine down on the roadway, we could prevent that. And it's easier for us to get the snow off the road. So this truck has computerized controls, so we're, we're able to put this material down very accurately at between 15 and, uh, or between 20 and 40 gallons per lane mile at an average speed of 15 miles per hour. So it, uh, it's very accurate, all computerized, and it's, uh, it seems to be working pretty good for us. Welcome to Around Kitsap. We're going to focus today on our Kitsap County roads and the upcoming storm season. We just saw a video on salt brine and how it is being used in Kitsap County. With me is Doug Bear. Doug is the public communications manager with the county and um, very close to the Public Works Department as Doug has worked in Public Works for many, many years. Um, Doug, Talk to us a little bit about salt brine and how it's being used in the county. Certainly. Salt brine is our newest tool that we use in our snow and ice control. Uh, it's a 23% sodium chloride and water solution that we apply to the roads, both preceding storms and during storms. And the big benefit is that if you have a period where you can apply the salt brine prior to the storm, it actually inhibits the snow and ice from adhering to the road surface. And that provides two advantages. Certainly in the initial phase of the storm, you don't have compact snow and ice. But so if you can keep the ice from becoming compact snow and ice, it's much easier to keep off the roads. And then secondly, once it has become compact snow and ice, it helps break that up so that the plowing operations become more effective. It's been used in a lot of different places throughout the United States. We started using it last year and it's proven very effective in helping us to maintain roads during snow and ice. Mm -hmm. um, those of us that grew up in the Midwest know that um, salt is mm. nasty on cars. How does salt brine affect cars around our area? Well, it's interesting, and that's a, that's a great question because a lot of us that are, grew up back east, I was from Pittsburgh, uh, know that back there, boy, they just used salt where everything got whited out and certainly uh, caused some consequences. A couple things to keep in mind when we talk about the corrosive nature of salt. First, this is uh, a 23% salt and water solution, so mm -hmm. the concentration of the sodium chloride is a lot less. Secondly, cars today are built with a lot less solid steel undercarriages. You know, certainly 20, 30 years ago, most of what a car was made out of was steel, so the likelihood of, of mm -hmm. you know, seeing the corrosive nature of sodium chloride was much more apparent. Uh, but I always encourage anyone to remember that when you drive, it's not only salt brine that's on roads, but state highways, so they use some chemical applications. Different jurisdictions may use different products to right. accomplish the same thing. So we always encourage motorists, if you've taken your car out in, in snowy weather, rinse it off when you get home. If you go through the car wash, use the undercarriage wash, uh, you know, and just take the normal precautions one does when you encounter anything on the, on the road that could be mm -hmm. potentially uh, a problem for your car. Mm -hmm. Training is very important for um, our men and women that are working on roads and taking care of roads. And I think especially true in the winter months, 
um, as we prepare for flooding events, um, winter storm events, and snow events. What else does the county do for preparing for winter storms? Well, one of the things we did during this off season prior to this year's winter storm season is we met with the local cities. Uh, due to annexation and some different things, we have some pockets uh, that aren't necessarily right next to where they're normally maintained. A good example is within Navy Yard City, there's some county pockets. Right. Likewise, the city of Bremerton is responsible for the industrial area out by the airport and the first mm -hmm. mile of Lake Flora. What we did is met with those local jurisdictions along with law enforcement, fire personnel, and, and sat down and said, how can we work together to create a, an effective response to storm areas? So we've taken a look at some of those common areas where we share responsibility for maintenance or areas where it's impractical for uh, you know, the city of Bremerton to send someone all the way out to Lake Flora when we're gonna plow almost up to that mile that, that they're responsible for anyhow. We worked out some agreements that allow us as a community to be a little more effective in how we respond to winter weather. Very smart, very, very smart. So let's talk about road prioritization and how are roads prioritized for county to get attention immediately? That's great. And we, we developed a prioritized response because, of course, we have limited resources, much like anyone else. It would be great if we could get to all 940 miles of county-maintained road and, and plow that clear in 12 hours. I'd love to be able to do that. It's simply not possible. So we do have to establish priorities so that when we utilize the limited resources that we have, we're using them effectively. What we looked at was what are the routes necessary to clear that will move people to areas of economics, for instance, the malls, the grocery stores, uh, medical facilities. Excellent. Can they get to the hospital? Can they get to the doctor? And, and so rather than just prioritizing roads, we looked at what would be the best thing we could do in the first 36 hours to get traffic moving again in Kitsap County. Mm -hmm. Those became our priority one routes, and that's where our initial storm response is focused. Once the event, and again, I, I should explain at this point that, that most of our storms are a singular event. We have a snow event, we can respond to it, uh, it doesn't snow more, it usually warms up and within three days or so right. most of our snow events are over, unlike last year unlike where we had a year. series of six storms. So under a normal event our, our priority one routes are those routes that we accomplish in the first 36 hours of a storm response. So we have the event, it stops, and in that first 36 hours, those priority one roads are the roads that we're clearing. And you can find a map on our website. We have a link to our inclement Great. weather page that will show you which roads are priority routes. Our secondary routes are the roads that feed into that system that, again, we're, you know, if you look at it from a big picture, we have, we have the, the places where people want to go, we take a step back to how do they get there, and then one further step back into the little residential neighborhoods. I think it's funny because people always say, why aren't you plowing my road? But if I came and plowed your road without getting those priority routes plowed first, you might be able to get out to the highway, but then if the highway wasn't plowed, you wouldn't be able to get anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's not only logical to use a priority route scheme, but it also allows us to get to those primary routes that will get people moving as quickly as possible after a storm event. And it's not just snow and ice that we think about when we're organizing these priority routes. Imagine an earthquake. Exactly. The condition is the same. We want to restore transportation to a level that gets people to those places. So, mm -hmm. so our priority routes would be the same regardless of the hazard. But we do really have to focus our, our efforts our, and our limited resources in a way that provides the best routes to move around in the county as quick as possible. And we've worked with law enforcement, fire agencies, first responders, Kitsap Transit, and looked at, at the different ways that we can coordinate with them a comprehensive solution that will get Kitsap County moving again as soon as possible after a storm. The, the secondary routes, the, the priority two routes, are what we accomplish in the 36 through 72 hour time frame. So, and, and again, most of our storms, by the end of the third day, we're pretty much down to slush on the roads and, and it's warmed up. Now, mm -hmm. if we have additional storms, we go right back to that priority, priority one and one. we start, it's just like a brand new storm. And that's what we ran into last year, why, why many people in residential areas said, you know, it's two weeks and I haven't seen a snowplow. We constantly had to go back to the priority one routes. Exactly. I think um, just a little bit of wisdom is when we do have a snowstorm and you don't have to leave your home, don't do it. But some folks have got to get to work. Um, it might not be mandatory for me to go shopping at the mall, but if I work at the mall, it's important for me to get there. I think the most valuable resource we have in the county is the county's website. 
go there. Doug, tell us what exactly the website's address is. Well, the website is kitsapgov.com, and on the right-hand side, you'll see a link to the Inclement Weather page. And on that page is where Excellent. we'll list some resources. But I would contend probably the most important resource is yourself. We have to all take some personal responsibility to prepare for this. And that means, you know, I drive a Ford Focus. It's not a, a winter car, but I make sure I have the right tires on it. On a snowy day, I leave my house about an hour earlier exactly. than I need to. You know, I expect to drive a little slower. But in addition to that, if we, you know, one of the common questions we got last year is, I have a very unique circumstance. We have an elderly woman in our neighborhood, or we have a, a person on oxygen, and, a, and our neighborhood's very unique, and we have very unique needs. That's not very unique. That's in every neighborhood. Exactly. So it's incumbent upon us to make sure that if, if, if I'm someone who has special needs, I'm going to make sure that I have enough medication on hand. I'm going to make sure that I've considered, if I, for instance, if I'm an oxygen patient, I'm going to talk to my oxygen provider and say, what can I do when I can't get out of here? Or maybe it means during the winter I, buy, I keep an extra bottle of oxygen on there. But mm -hmm. probably one of the most important resources is ourselves. We have to make sure that our cars are prepared for winter travel. We have to make sure that we are prepared for winter travel. It, it's a lot more strenuous to drive during winter driving situations than it is during the summer. So yes, it is. I do think there are some great resources, but sometimes Superman's not coming. And the Department of Emergency Management has some great preparedness tips on their webpage. It's kitsapdem.org that can really help you prepare. And again, it goes beyond the snowstorm. We were inconvenienced for two weeks by a snowstorm last year. Mm -hmm. Imagine the inconvenience that comes with a major earthquake. So it really is the smartest resources we personally take some responsibility to prepare ourselves, our home, and our families so that we can be self-sufficient for at least the first three days of any type of mm -hmm. emergency. Exactly. Because nothing is important, nothing is more important than our own safety. True. And the safety, as we ensure our safety, we ensure the safety of others. Um, we talked about the website. Please use it. Um, anything else to close our show, Doug. We, well, we do have the Kitsap one line. It's 360-337-5777. That's our main customer support number. Um, again, we, we were taking about 1,000 to 1,200 calls a day during the storm, and the most common question we get is, when are you going to plow my road? I think if you understand the priority system that we use, uh, you, you can make some educated guess. That combined with the information that we'll provide an update on the web page will give you an idea of whether we're on priority one routes or priority two routes and give you some idea of when uh, you might expect to plow. But frankly, if you're not a priority one or a priority two route, you're not probably going to see a plow in the first 72 hours uh, unless it's a very light event. Mm -hmm. So right. I encourage people to look at that map. And again, it comes down to that personal planning. It, mean, it means I may have to go to a different route during uh, snor storm events if I'm going to work, but um, I think that <clears throat> if we take those efforts beforehand, before the storm hits, then our response to the storm will be more effective. Great. Well, let's hope we have a really hmm. um, easy winter as compared to last year. And if we don't, please tune to uh, KitsapGov dot com and check the county's website for that information and stay tuned for BCAT. We will keep it updated as well with road closures and emergency information. Great. Thank you, Doug, so much for coming Thank in you. and sharing this information and we appreciate you tuning in to Around Kitsap and we'll see you next time.